here. Not all nerds are weak and not all strong people are dumb. Anyway. Hey guys, welcome back to another supplement sit down. Um, I'm in a hotel room right now because I'm at a medical school interview and I'm just going to do a quick video because it's a nice background. It's different than my office. So today I promised you we talk about BCAAs or branch chain amino acids. And um, of course we'll go through the regular disclosures. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. I'm an EMT. I'm a pre-med. I know how to read research papers, but I haven't gotten a degree that says, you know everything about this or not. But in today's society, let's be honest, sometimes degrees don't really matter because I've met people who are brilliant without degrees. But I have been doing research on some branch chain amino acids. I actually found like one really great paper um, that has done a reflective like it gathered a whole bunch of other papers and just reflected on what they talked about. Um, but there was actually another great article on buildingbody.com that talked about branched amino acids. Didn't go into a lot of the technical stuff, but a lot of it um, can be found on there. And of course, I'll link it down below. So BCAAs or branched chain amino acids. What are they? There are three types of branched chain amino acids that we're going to be talking about. Leucine isoleucine, and valine. So a little bit about amino acids in general. There are 22 amino acids that our body uses. Um, and what we use amino acids for is protein synthesis. So it's if you didn't know this already, when you eat meat, you're eating muscle, essentially. And so our body, these takes the muscle that we digest and makes it into our own muscle. That's why everyone's like, protein, protein, protein. Anyway, so, um, but what it is, is you're taking those that protein, breaking it down into amino acids, so little parts of protein, and then using those for muscle synthesis. They actually can be used for energy um, in the citric acid, citric acid cycle. Um, so our body is great at taking things that it finds and using it for everything just because the human body is really cool. Of those 22 amino acids, nine are essential, which means that you need to eat them to gain them because our body can't synthesize them for out of nowhere. So of those nine essential amino acids, the ones that we're talking about are leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Amino acids can not only change proteins after they're made, but it also can encourage proteins to be made. By, um, so there's a couple parts to making protein. Um, of course, you have, we're going to have to put this in page terms. So there's something called mRNA, which is like a copy of your DNA. So you can't take the DNA. It's like a reference book out of the library. You can't take it out of the library. You can't take it out of the cell. You can't take DNA out of the cell. So you make a copy of it with mRNA, messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is made and then it leaves the, uh, leaves the nucleus to go make the protein. It's like, all right, I've copied down all my notes from the library. We're going to go make it. And then it has to find ribosomes. Ribosomes are like, let's assume we're making a jet engine. So a little nerd messenger went to the library, to the nucleus, copy down all the notes on how to make it, but and he leaves the library, leaves the nucleus, all excited, he's ready to make it, but he can't make it by himself, he's not strong enough to lift things. Wrong stereotypes here. Not all nerds are weak and not all strong people are dumb. Anyway, um, and so he, he gets a couple of football players, big, like, blockers, big football players to help him out. Those are the ribosomes, and they do the heavy lifting. And so, so what amino acids do is that they basically encourage the messenger RNA and the ribosomes to get together and work. So it encourages protein synthesis um, because that's what the messenger RNA is coding for. It's coding for proteins, for enzymes, 
um, basically like for making things in the body. Of the three branched-chain amino acids we're talking about today, leucine has been shown to be the biggest player in muscle syn synthesis. Um, and of course, then you're asking, well, if leucine is what everyone does, leucine is pretty much what everyone talks about when they pull out the research papers. They're saying leucine does this, leucine does that. Well, why don't we just take leucine and not all three branched chain amino acids of one to be cheaper? So, of course, if you remember back to my L carotene video, the body homeostasis, um, the body likes to maintain certain ratios of things. If you screw with those ratios, it stops acting the way it's supposed to. <clears throat> so, with these branched chain amino acids, the best ratio we've had, we've found, is about a two to one to one of leucine, isoleucine, and valine. When you're synthesizing proteins and building up muscle, you don't need just bricks. You need mortar. You need manpower. You, you can't just have one thing because you'll run out of it, right? So, I'm um, sorry, I was comparing it to a brick, building a brick wall because these muscles are bricks. All proteins are made out of amino acids. You could get your the three leucine, isoleucine, and valine from whey protein, from chicken, from eggs, you know, from protein. Um, so why the synthesized branched chain amino acids versus just whole clean food? The theory behind taking branched chain amino acids is that it encourages your body to use the branched chain amino acids and not your own muscles for something called uh, catabolism. So when the body needs energy, it's going to break down something to um, make sure that it keeps running. Because if we don't have any energy, we die. Sometimes when the body is desperate for energy, it'll pull from both sources. So it'll be breaking down fat, but it'll also be breaking down a little bit of muscle. And that's why you hear people saying, well, I've lost a lot of weight, but I've also lost a lot of muscle because the body has been using some of your muscle to energize it. So what by taking branched chain amino acids in its pure form and it's you drink it and it can be automatically synthesized and go straight to your blood system is that the body now has branched chain amino acids to not only use if you need energy, but you can use it for, um, but you can use it for muscles, muscle synthesis. So instead of shifting it from, okay, I need either energy or to build muscle, it can do both because it now has excess. So there, and there have been a lot of studies on if branched amino acids give you energy or anything like that. Um, they're saying that it doesn't increase strength but overall, it's mostly just to prevent that muscle breakdown. You don't want to lose those muscles. And it makes it a lot easier for the body to get that in the system. Um, there have been a lot of studies done on different enzymes that build muscle. And um, after and after when they test the body before and after exercise, after taking BCAs and not taking BCAs, there are significantly higher. There are significantly significantly increased levels of enzymes that make muscles after you take BECAs versus not taking them. So basically your body is saying, oh, okay, we have the energy we need. We have all the, the fat and the amino acids, whatever we need to make energy. So we're okay. We're set there. Basic needs have been met. So now I can build muscle. And that's kind of the goal of branched chain amino acids, just taking pure branched chain amino acids. It's just to make sure your body has all of its needs met. So it's not taken away from your muscles and these these guns, you know. Can't take these guns. Well, the truth of the matter is, if you're not lifting heavy, if you're not like working out a ton, you know, you're just going to the gym in the normal, like and you're doing your normal workout. But it's nothing like intense. You're not trying to build muscle. You might be trying to lose weight. You know, it might help you a little bit. Um, just to make sure that you're getting in the right amount of amino acids into your diet. Um, so it might help. But if you're on a budget, you're not doing any sort of competition, if you're just trying to look good, there's really no point to it. Um, you know, it's one of the things, just make sure you're eating enough protein in your diet that it'll cover it. It's not a big deal. 
No, for someone like me or the people who are doing heavy lifting or it's um, bodybuilding, like more so than me, if that makes sense. So there's, I'm doing a kind of a softer bodybuilding, which is bikini, but like these fitness girls or the figure girls, they got to build some muscle. So they need those branched-chain amino acids. Um, definitely, you're going to want to supplement your diet with some branched-chain amino acids during and after your workout because that's when your body uses those the most because it's, you know, you're tired. It needs energy, so it's synthesizing um, and using all of the amino acids it can find. So you want to make sure your body has plenty, which is why they say take it during and after your workout. Now, dosing. So I will tell you something, and this might break you out, but don't, you have to listen to the whole thing before you freak out. So you can have too many branch chain amino acids, just like you can overdose on water. It takes a lot, but it's plausible. Like it, it's, you could drink a ton of them. So the general rule is about 10 grams of branched chain amino acids is about what you want. So that means there's going to be about uh, two to three grams of leucine, about a gram, a gram and a half of isoleucine, and about the same for valine. Honestly, 10 grams, so if, um, I looked up, so the, the amino acids I use are Cellucor, just because they taste good to me, um, and they're decently, they're reasonably priced, and in one scoop, you have 5 grams, so that means it would take 2 scoops to reach what you needed for an 80 pound, an 80 kilogram person, which is about 160. 170 pounds? I usually double it and add 10. Um, but the overdose level, so that means one scoop can pretty much cover you, maybe two scoops a day. The overdose level means you have to be taking seven scoops a day. If you're drinking seven scoops, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of branched amino acids that you probably don't need. Unless your doctor has said you're deficient or something, you probably don't need them. But again, you do what you want. Don't listen to little me. Um, so it takes about 35 grams a day of amino acids to overdose on them. But it's not like an, like an overdose you think you pass out cold. It actually just screws with your blood, blood balances um, and their blood ammonia levels. Um, so it's just really hard on your kidneys. Who shouldn't take these? Um, if you have any sort of kidney problems or liver problems, you want to talk to your doctor, definitely. Um, there have been some studies that said that branched-chain amino acids can help with something called liver cirrhosis, um, but not liver failure. Um, because if the liver is failing, it can't uh, process the amino acids, it can't um, get them out of your blood. So we definitely want to make sure you're not building them up in your system. Um, it does need to be cleaned, and your body will do it. These cleansing things, we'll talk about that later, but your body will clean if you take care of your body. Like I said, there have been some studies that said that branched-chain amino acid, acid supplements may help liver cirrhosis. So if that's something that you or a friend is, having struggle, is struggling with, um, which is a pretty serious thing, you can talk to your doctor about it. Um, just say, hey, I saw this, and I was wondering what you would think about it. Um, definitely, a lot of the times, if you have any sort of blood imbalance levels or anything like that, talk to your doctor. Um, because a lot of these supplements are not regulated, as in anyone can buy them. You don't need a prescription, which is a little bit scary for some of the stuff that we that's on the market. So, um, we'll have a talk about the FDA. I keep saying that, but I need to do that. We need to have a talk about the FDA. And supplements and regulation. That's branched chain amino acids in a nutshell. Essentially, it's 
great to take them if you're lifting. Um, are they necessary? No, but if you're doing heavy lifting and doing a lot of lifting, probably would help. But in general, eating a lot of protein does can do the trick. Um, for someone like me, who's on the go a lot, I can't eat gobs and gobs and gobs of chicken. It helps. I have done it without, and I've done it with branching amino acids, and I see better results with. That's just my experience, so take that as you will. I haven't decided what we're going to talk about next video, but if you feel like commenting, if you have any questions on certain supplements that I, you want me to research on, just comment down below. Give me a thumbs up if this was helpful or entertaining. Um, if you have any papers or any insight on branching amino acids, feel free to comment. Feel free shoot me um shoot me a message or something and we can talk because i definitely want this to be an open forum i'm not the world's foremost expert on branching amino acids i'm just telling you what i've learned so let me know have a great day side note there will be a lot of people that kind of correct you on how to pronounce things in various aspects of life. Uh, for example, there's part of your intestine that's called a du the duodenum is how I've heard it pronounced. Um, it's spelled like duodenum, but people pronounce it duodenum. Well, fun fact. So I had this argument with my mother when I first learned about it. Um, and said, no, it's duodenum. Stuatinum, and my mother, of course, is a physician. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, does it matter? And she's like, yes, it does. Okay. I'll take her for a word. She's a physician. She knows what she's talking about. She's gone through four degrees. She knows something about the body. <laughs> so she, she knows a lot. Um, and then I get to my anatomy and physiology class in college. And my professor, who's brilliant, um, has a PhD in biology. Um, has been studying the body for years, like, and I mean like 40 years. He says duodenum. So now I got a medical doctor telling me it's duodenum. I got a PhD doctor telling me it's duodenum. What I've learned is that stick, like if, if it's generally, you've heard it pronounced one way, then you can go with it, but the word you've never heard before and you've only seen it, you do you, boo-boo. You do you.